to our Cypress Swamp Habitarium feeding. I'm Trisha, Aquarium Curator here at the Living Museum. And uh, as you can see, we're wearing our masks, trying to stay safe uh, here at the facility. So if you can't hear me, just go ahead and tell us. And also, um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop in at any time, and my camera person will uh, ask away, and we'll also be answering along. Um, so what I'm gonna do is feed these fish. What you guys were looking at were our small side of our Cypress Swab Habitarium, uh, full of various different catfish, uh, yellow perch, uh, some white perch, um, carp, largemouth bass, uh, some crappie and other sunfish. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about what species we have, uh, just let me know. We have this Habitarium separated by size, uh, so that no one fish will get too uh, too big or too small for each other and might not uh, happen to eat each other. So I'm gonna scale back and feed them now if you want to take a look at our food for today. We try and vary their diet as much as possible, but we also try and stick to what they naturally eat. So what we have is, this is actually some rockfish or striper filet. This is crayfish tail meat right here cut up into size. And this is omnivore gel diet. And the gel diet comes in different forms, but we have it as an omnivore diet for the fishes. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of mix it up and broadcast it around for everyone to get a fair share. As you can see, our catfish are quite bloodless and eat really quickly. So the different kinds of catfish we have in here, um, we have some juvenile channel catfish, which are these kind of blue-gray ones, uh, really attractive little catfish. And then these brown ones in the back are bullheads. They're actually yellow bullheads, and we also have brown bullheads. Um, and they stay pretty small. I think we have a white catfish in here as well, but I don't know where. I think that one hides in the back. We have some common carp in here, which look a lot like catfish, or I'm sorry, uh, goldfish. Um, and they are related to goldfish. Um, common carp are naturalized now, but have been introduced from Europe a long time ago. So if you guys are ready to move on, we'll move on to the next section, which is our large side. And as you can see, these animals are significantly larger than the small side animals. Uh, we have our long nose gar, which I will be feeding separately. Our swamp turtles in here, which you might have seen with Travis on our weekend feeding uh, Facebook Live. We also have some channel catfish in here as well, large ones, and a couple albino channel catfish, like this big yellow guy swimming uh, into, the, into the frame right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed them all along the side. just much larger pieces so they can handle uh, bigger chunks of food. We have a question over here. We have, or two questions. We have two a uh, question from the, the Pounders girls. How many fish are in there? Uh, how question. many fish? I don't know. Uh, quite honestly, we have a lot of fish. And my um, Zim's coordinator, a uh, staff member would probably be able to tell you more of how many we have, but I know we have, I want to say about 10, eight, 8 to 10 catfish on this side, uh, about 20 or 22 uh, long-nosed gar, maybe about 5 or 6 uh, largemouth bass. We have two bowfin, which are one of my favorite fish, uh, which is coming up in front of you right now. Um, and then several turtles. So I'm going to say about 30 to 40 fish on this side of the exhibit. Next question is how often do they get fed? That's a great question. We feed them every other day at 11 o'clock. So they get fed at 11 o'clock on the dot every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, and then actually sometimes this tank gets an additional enrichment feeding of live shiner fish that we get once a week. So I'm gonna actually try and target the gar now. The gar are, uh, do we have another question? Uh, yes, wait one second. 
Uh, Lorelai wants to know, do they have trouble adjusting when you switch them from small tanks to large tanks? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, these guys have been in the same exhibit for several years now, um, and they're very easily adaptable to, it's really literally just from one side of the room to the other. Uh, so they adapt really quickly. We have a quick question about the albino catfish. They're huh? wondering how we got them. How we got them? Well, actually, the albino catfish came to us from a hatchery from Pennsylvania uh, a couple years ago, or a few years ago, actually. They grew very quickly. Um, so these albino catfish, you wouldn't really see them happen in the wild. It would be more of a, it's a, a mutation in hatchery, um, hatchery environments. There is also actually what I want to get my hands on, a piebald catfish. And if you've ever seen a piebald deer, you might know what I'm talking about. It is where it's kind of semi-albino. It has uh, patches of white here and there, but not the whole thing. And I think it's really interesting. It kind of looks like a dairy cow. All right, I have a question. There, we have a question about the gar, so I guess I'll zoom up here and Great. see the gar. And if you want to feed them at the same time, that's you probably will. perfect because it fits the question. Uh, Annalie, age four, wants to know, why does that fish have a long mouth? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, these gar are actually called long-nosed gar, and they're actually a primitive fish, kind of a living dinosaur. So they're very simplistic jaws. If you want to span back and look, I'm going to be feeding them kind of long, thin pieces and their mouth literally works exactly like these tongs. It's just a simple one up down motion and they can't really open too much. So I'm gonna kinda give it to them quick and then they have to work it long ways and then swallow it whole. So that's just the way they are. Gar have, ah, uh, catfish are getting in the way. Gar have really long noses, but these are longer in particular because they are a long nosed gar species. That makes sense. Oh, catfish straight up stole that one. Feel free to keep asking questions. Ah, we have a question from Doug. How are they doing with less people around? <laughs> uh, they don't really seem to notice. These guys are very, um, they usually just kind of hang out really docile animals. They obviously are amped up for the feeding, but otherwise they just kind of chill like they would in a swamp naturally. Um, but I can tell you other fishes in the aquarium are actually doing kind of really enjoying not, not having too many people around. We miss you. And I think some of the fishers are enjoying not having the glass banged on a little bit. <laughs> We do know a couple of the fish do actually miss uh, guests. There have been yes. some that have been extra attentive to us because they're so used to having guests walking yes, by their exhibit. Yes, that is actually true. And I know the turtles miss, miss the guests for sure. So these catfish are being very hungry. I know they get plenty of food. Easton, age six, wants to know, do they ever try to jump out of the water? Uh, so this tank, no but we do have barriers that we put up at night when we're open and actually keep up for most of the day uh, on the small side and as well as throughout the uh, museum in case they would want to jump out. So we, they might kind of get spooked and jump and accidentally jump out onto the ground. So we have barriers that we keep up to kind of keep them in the enclosure. But no, these guys don't ever, the gar or the catfish don't ever jump. Yep. Uh, Eleanor wants to know why are fish so slimy? Ah, fish are slimy. They have, uh, it's kind of one of their um, mechanisms for, uh, I'm losing my word here, sorry guys. Like protection. I guess. Yeah, protection, thank you. Um, so for example, if you were to pull them out of the water, that actually mucus kind of helps keep them from drying out but also it can make them slippery to not be eaten by predators and so forth. And Ellie would like to know, why are they called catfish? <laughs> catfish are called catfish because they look like cats. 
Uh, no, it's their whiskers. Their whiskers kind of make them look like cats. Um, cats have long whiskers. Um, if you guys have a cat at home, you can see. Um, and I think that's the only reason why they're called catfish. Zach wants to know, do we rehome fish that have gotten too large for someone's home aquarium? We do, it depends. Um, it would have to be a native uh, fish species. Um, there are times where we'll take in uh, your occasional tropical fish as kind of an education or ambassador animal. Um, but generally we try and only rehome native fishes, so Virginia native animals. Actually, one of these gar Actually, a couple of them are rehomed from other aquariums. So this largest one back here is actually from Virginia Aquarium. And then we have two from the <laughs> aquarium at Mims that we have uh, rehomed. And then our fishes, if they get too large for uh, aquarium life, we will actually release them into the wild. Huh? We have a question, um, two, a two-part question. How big do catfish get and how big do these long-nosed gar get? So these long-nosed gar are full grown. We have various uh, sizes in here. The larger females will probably get like this big lady here, uh, about close to four feet long. Generally, the long-nosed gar don't get any larger than the ones we have in this exhibit. The males are a bit smaller, so they're still a little shorter. But we have some big chunky females mm -hmm. and then you're asking uh, how big do the catfish get it depends on the species but these are also full-grown channel catfish here about three feet long um, and they can weigh several several pounds um, I think the record is about 58 pounds for one of these catfish yes. which is huge and we do have some blue catfish not in this exhibit uh, but in our catfish exhibit so once they start getting bigger we'll put them in here and they get even larger uh two questions that go together um how do we tell the fish apart and why are the gar spotted the gar are spotted um because that's an adaptation that they've had uh, over time. I think it, most fish have a pattern to suit their environment, so it's a camouflage of some kind. Um, as for how do we tell the fish apart, you just kind of know which one's which. Um, they all have sig a spe special patterns, special looks, um, special sizes, so you just kind of get to know which one is which. Um, but there are times where you kind of lose lose sight of who's who, especially these gar. <laughs> Are there any other questions popping in? All right, well, I guess we're gonna wrap it up for today. Um, be sure to continue watching our natural education here on Facebook and also on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. Uh, and join us later this afternoon at 2.30 for our Facebook Live. We're going to be uh, feeding the baby spotted turtle. Uh, I know we didn't do well the last time, but maybe he'll come around again this time. Uh, we'll be doing that with our herpetology staff. Um, please uh, consider either adopting a wild thing or uh, contributing to our emergency fund. You can get updated information on all of that and our um, programming at thevlm.org. That's T-H-E-V-L-M.org. And thanks for joining us today. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>